Yeah, we're going to pick up on those comments right now with our panel, Hillary Vaughn from Washington. Hillary, thank you very much. I uh, want to show you the markets right now, and there's a lot going on that are affecting your money. Uh, stock's a bit lower right now, but for the most part, the markets have been shrugging off the political turmoil in Washington. But does Wall Street think impeachment is unlikely? And is the president right when impeachment tank the markets? For more on all of this, I want to bring in trader Todd Horowitz. Adam Lashinsky from Fortune Magazine is with me, and Nicole Petalini is on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. And, and Nicole, I want to take that to you first. You know, the traders, they really watch very closely every word that the president said. What do you think that they made of the comments today that the market would crash if he were impeached? No joke, honestly. It's something that the traders were talking about today. And first, to your first question as to whether or not they think he will be impeached, the answer is clearly no. But jokingly, there have been some comments about impeachment and whether or not you'd move to cash. In fact, one trader came into the booth and said, when do we move to cash? Is he really going to be impeached? I mean, that's all sort of tongue-in-cheek, Cheryl. But the truth of the matter is that it's not just impeaching our president, but it's the policies that have been saving this market, our businesses, our Obviously, all the folks around America with better taxes, uh, more confidence, it's the policies that go along with it that have shown very evident in the latest earnings reports. So, uh, no, they don't think he'll be impeached, but they do agree that if he were impeached, that, it, that he would see some sort of sell-off. Right. Well, a more likely scenario, Todd, could be that we see the House flip in the November midterms. We talked a lot about the possibility of a blue wave. That is politics, and that is something that obviously traders would have to look at. But at the same time, Time. You know, you've made the point before that we're kind of a, we might be towards the end of this bull run because of all the retail buying that we're seeing. Separate issue. Hi, Cheryl. You know, I, I think that's what, first of all, if we do get a change from uh, from red to blue, I think that would create a little bit of selling in the house. But also the markets themselves, you know, they don't go straight to the sky. We've had a record-setting bull market. They've gone up almost every month for, for 10 years. And at some point, there's going to be some profit-taking. And right now, the money that's coming into the market is more from the retail traders. The commercial traders are more selling, and a lot of the insiders are selling a lot of these buybacks. So to me, although market go up 8% year over year, we would be due for some sort of a sell-off. And if you tie in together that debt bomb that we have out there, when interest rates start to rise, that could create a much bigger problem. And I think we will see some sort of a sell-off coming. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, too, Adam, because we're watching all of the rhetoric that's coming out of Jackson Hole. You know, it was interesting also this week that the president in a Reuters interview criticized Jerome Powell, which is kind of a rare thing. I mean, when you look at, at events like that, verbiage like that against the Fed chair, does that make you nervous about being fully invested in this market? Well, um, I would say one has nothing to do with the other. I really like the way the way Todd put it. You know, Todd introduced almost no politics in anything that he said, and I think he's exactly right. The economy and the market can survive whatever else, whatever happens politically and will survive whatever happens politically. And even if President Trump were to have a glorious another uh, however many years it is that he might be in office with no impeachment, mm -hmm. the market will go down, the economy will enter a recession at some point during that period. We know that to be a fact. So I'm, you know, from, a, from an economy or a market perspective, yeah. I'm not concerned about what happens yeah. next. Okay. And, and, and again, we're, you know, the theme seems to be here that impeachment, that the markets would survive. We've heard different comments on that. But you know what? I want to bring back something, Nicole, that, uh, that we've been looking at and talking about under the Trump economy, under the Trump presidency, is unemployment. I mean, look at where unemployment was, the highs that we had in particular back in 2010 as the recession was in full swing. Now you're at almost full employment. Wages aren't great, Nicole, but they've been doing better. If you look right. at a chart, though, you can kind of see that it began under the last president, but it's gotten better and better under President Trump. Yeah, no doubt. And I don't necessarily want to put some sort of politics in this, but a prediction for a recession just a moment ago uh, over the next, let's say, uh, six years, that is somewhat troubling. We don't want to see a recession once again here. We've had a great bull run. In fact, it's the longest in history. Uh, but unemployment right. obviously has been good news thus far. And we've seen wages going higher. And the feeling, I have to tell you, right now, I'm not hearing people concerned 
concerned about a major pullback or even worse, a recession. In fact, they're still feeling optimistic. The things that they're saying that can derail this move would be a stronger, stronger dollar, which we've seen a move, but it's been pulling back some recently, a trade wars, uh, and an over-aggressive Fed. And we'll be hearing from Jay Powell on Friday uh, yeah. at Jackson Hole, and that yeah. will be very key, folks. I mean, we're going to see what our Fed head has to say about that, and so everybody will be listening for that. You know, Todd, that's a really good point. We are going to be hearing from Jerome Powell, and, and the Fed is something that might be even more, uh, you know, precious to all of us than, than politics. But at the same time, there's this really interesting move in the country with these younger voters, and, and I, I bring this up because we may see a, a change in November in the power structure of Washington because the, socialism, you've got especially these young Democrats that are talking about being socialists. And there was actually a Fox News poll that just came out that showed, I got to show you this, um, a U.S. move towards socialism, would it be good or bad? I can't believe this, Todd. 36% say that it would be a good thing if we were a socialist country and that it would be a bad thing. 51% say it's a bad thing. And that's a big jump from the other polling that we've done in the past. What do you make of that? Well, that that thirty six percent are obviously living under mommy and daddy's roof in their in their bank account because obviously they don't understand how the real economy works. And and, and until they wake up and you have to see what's going on. For example, you mentioned Venezuela at the top of the hour. Yeah. When you see how socialism really works, where they take money from hard workers and want to give it to everybody else, that is not the way that, that true free markets work. And when you end up in socialism, as Margaret Thatcher said, when you run out of other people's money, you got trouble. And that's exactly <laughs> what will happen is what we're watching in Venezuela right now. Adam, I don't know. You don't think that free health care, free beer, free college, free everything is going to be good for the U.S. economy? <laughs> Well, it sound, it sound, those things sound very good to me, especially the free beer part, my favorite kind. But I suspect, <laughs> Cheryl, that there's some issues here with people's understanding of, of the definition of socialism. Venezuela, as Todd knows, that's not socialism either. That's a military dictatorship with some screwy economics. Yes. And in fact, we've been living under a form of socialism in the United States, social democracy, well, the welfare state, ever since Franklin Roosevelt. And it's worked out pretty well for a lot of people. So. I think these young people in this poll might not be so well educated on these complicated philosophical terms. We'll see if they vote. That's going to be the interesting part of all of this.